What is it in the body? Swords? And my own head is in my hands. Iron hands hold a knight's helmet with red plumage. What is that look? Knight's armor is sitting on cold stones in a relaxed pose. The collar of the armor is made of white fluffy fur. Ornate patterns are painted on the forearms. The lower part of the chain mail is made of gold. Starting from the chest and ending with the back, swords of various types are stuck into the armor, made of gold, silver, wood. The armor holds its own helmet in iron hands, as if they are not made of metal, but are a real person. Is this really him? It's just a suit of armor without a person inside, similar to a disembodied spirit. How did he become like this? Could it be related? The soldiers are calling loudly for their captain. They are completely at a loss what to do. A huge demon, engulfed in pink flames, with three pairs of hands, four red eyes, menacingly towering over small people. In its wide mouth there are several dozen teeth on the palms. Instead of five fingers, there are four scarlet claws capable of cutting human flesh in an instant. Tall houses are burning beneath his feet. People are screaming that an evil demon has killed their brothers, that they all need to leave. However, the captain of the wise heart, he can't just run away like a sneaky coward. The name of the captain of the wise heart faction is Zhang Bao. He has long red hair, braided in a high ponytail and fastened with a wide elastic band. His face expresses determination and will to win. We should wear a vest with long sleeves, and nothing under it, a naked torso. Wide beads with a white stone in the center hang on the neck. With a belligerent cry, he shouts that the sacrifices of their comrades will not be in vain. He gathers an orange flame around him and, engulfed by it like a comet among the stars, rushes upwards with a powerful leap. His colleagues in blue uniforms warn him with horror that he will die like this. But their captain doesn't care about that. They are fighting against evil, so even if he has to die with this bestial monster, he will do it. Having already flown up to his mouth, Jang Bao slows down sharply. The demon growls at him, and the captain's bright flame absorbs the pink smoke coming from the demon. The man does not understand where he got such power. The next moment, the monster attacks, and Zhang Bao is already without a body spirit in worn armor. It looks like he moved to another world, but why did the soul change into armor? The captain rises from the ground and the blue smoke surrounding him seems to help do this. He remembers his last enemy with fury. Zhang Bao must try his best to come back to defeat him. The captain has never used this technique before, so he hopes that it will work out now. He stretches both hands forward, drops two fingers of the left down, and two fingers of the right up. An orange flame begins to swirl from them. It gathers into a ball, and something is about to happen. But the fire turns into thin streams at the same moment. The captain is at a loss, feeling with his fingers the place where his chest should be. He realizes that now he has no Kai energy, since it remained in the last body, and only the soul has passed into the armor. Without this energy, Zhang Bao cannot use any secret techniques. Speaking of which, where is he now? The sky is overcast around him, the ground is gray under his feet, people in heavy armor with wooden shields are fighting very nearby. There is fatigue and pain on their faces, they are clearly losing ground. Among the pile of people, you can see their opponents, whose necks are burning with pink fire. Looking closer, the demons have a void in the place where their eyes should be. Their arms are thinner than humans, as are their bodies. One of the knights, with all the rage he can muster, calls on his comrades to hold the formation. They must repel the offensive of the cursed armor. Another knight turns to the princess who appeared behind, informs that there are even more enemies ahead. Another with a mustache asks if they will continue to fight. From the princess, a lightning-fast answer is heard that yes, they will. She reminds them that the third rule of knights is never to back down. She is dressed in the same dense armor as her soldiers. A scarlet mantle develops behind her back, and a kind of crown shines on her thick pink hair, braided in two tight braids. In her left hand, she holds a sword with a strong grip, almost bigger than herself. The princess asks her knights that did they really have time to forget all the rules of chivalry. The caster they are fighting wants to destroy all living things. He will never stop. If they want to return peace to the lands, they must get the sword of the forefathers from the stone. And in order to do this, they need to destroy all the enemies standing in their righteous path. The princess takes a fighting stance and then rushes in the front rows into battle. The knights behind cheer on their princess Violet. Zhang Bao, standing to the side, watches the unfolding battle. He understands that the war will never stop. It exists in any world and time. However, he doesn't have time for all this nonsense. Putting his index finger to the chin of the helmet, he ponders a way to regain his Kai energy. If he follows the standard path, recovery may take too much time, which his comrades who are left alone with the demon do not have. Suddenly, on the battlefield, something attracts his attention, namely Princess Violet. A faint golden glow emanates from her sword. 
It seems that this weapon has a weak flow of Kai. Is it enchanted? However, whether this is true or not, even if this sword is magical, it is still a spiritual item that naturally collects Kai. The presence of a magical artifact accelerates the absorption of energy. A spiritual object can be anything. Mirrors, books, jewelry, jugs, incense burners. Is it possible that they exist in this world as well? Need to check. Knights and Princess Violet stand over the bodies of defeated enemies. The girl, without addressing anyone in particular, says that at all costs she will fulfill her mission. She exhales wearily, tired after a long battle with dishonesty. Suddenly Zhang Bao grabs the princess by the hand and asks her to lend him a sword. The girl does not even have time to realize the situation. The captain continues to pull out his weapon, while the knights pour dirty curses on him. And the princess with round eyes looks at the creep. The largest of the knights, calling Zhang Bao an asshole, throws him back a few meters and orders him not to touch Princess Violet. The soldier immediately asks the girl if she is okay and if she has been harmed. She nods as if to say that everything is fine with her. The princess looks at the captain, wondering if he is from their army. She had not seen him before, and it seems that this guy is not in his right mind. Zhang Bao, rising from the ground, asks to be careful with the tin can that he has now instead of a normal body, since this thing falls apart at the slightest touch. The helmet flew off his head, and therefore it is now visible inside the armor is empty. The princess's eyes fill with horror. When Zhang Bao puts on his helmet, he is already surrounded by a crowd of angry knights. They shout that the inside of the armor is empty, they call him a cursed demon. However, he speaks like a man, is he really that powerful? One of the knights who recently defended Violet asks what these fools are afraid of. It's just armor. In his hands are three huge iron balls with patterns on the sides, with which he attacks Zhang Bao like a juggler. The knight is extremely surprised that the captain dodged his blow so easily. Zhang Bao, in a completely calm manner, pokes his index finger at the body of the ball, noticing that everyone here looks so nervous. Without Kai energy, they are no match for the captain anyway. The princess quickly attacks Zhang Bao in a jump, saying that it was too naive. With a powerful blow of her sword, she cuts through the captain's chest, and he notices the aura of Kai in this weapon. It really turned out to be enchanted. Zhang Bao abruptly flies far into the field, and Violet orders everyone to concentrate. The soldier apologizes to his princess for such a gross oversight. The princess turns around at some sounds and sees an army of demonic armor in front of her. She gives the order that they have no time for doubt and quickly rushes into battle. Together with her faithful knight, whose weapon is three iron balls, she goes to the very epicenter of the enemy army. Without sparing themselves, they fight with all their might. Other knights of the army look at this with their mouths agape and understand what the phrase knight with experience means. Only it is unclear who exactly they mean, their brave young princess or her fearless defender and companion. The demonic armor attacks Violet, whom she immediately kills. However, two more appear in place of one. The knight shouts that he is going to help the princess, but she realizes that the onslaught is too big. Violet will soon be completely exhausted. Suddenly, the demon knocks the sword out of her thin hands, and the weapon flies right behind Zhang Bao, who returns his head to the place again. It takes just one blow to get his head off his shoulders. He turns around at the sound of a sword landing. The weapon emits a golden smoke. This is the same sword that Zhang Bao noticed at the very beginning. He pulls his iron hand towards it, saying that it is his charm. As soon as the captain grasps the hilt of the sword with his palm, his whole body is covered with orange flames, as it was in a previous life. A man wonders if this magical object should work on the same principle as from his world. He feels the Kai energy filling every cell of his new body. However, it is very small compared to his previous life. Princess Violet continues to fight monsters, although she is well aware that the numerical advantage is on the enemy's side. Zhang Bao tries to attack with a new weapon. Raising his sword, he lights up the path with a golden glow and attacks the enemy army. With a few blows, he breaks his way, and dust, splinters, stones and the bodies of demons fly into the air. The knights, like Violet, stand in complete disbelief. The cursed armor is fighting with other cursed armor. Besides, there are too many enemies for him alone but the instincts of a stranger are simply excellent. Is he stronger than Lord Carl? Zhang Bao hears their words perfectly, but he does not understand what the knights are talking about. Only someone who doesn't know how to use Kai will consider it a fighting instinct. The captain crouches on one knee to make a sharp maneuver. He sees the Kai flows in their bodies, feels it in his weapon, and the disembodied spirit in armor can use all the accumulated knowledge to conduct a lightning attack. With the sword, he creates a stream of energy that throws off dozens of enemies. Zhang Bao remains completely alone on the battlefield. 
He turns around and notices Violet and Lord Carl looking at him. The knight asks the captain with a shout, what is he trying to achieve? Zhang Bao raises his hands in front of him in a protective gesture and asks them to relax at least a little since he does not wish anyone harm. However, since he helped Princess Violet's army for a reason, now it's their turn to repay him with full. He says he will use the sword for his own purposes. The captain needs to take some of the Kai and then he can return to his world. He whispers a spell from the reincarnation technique and his body is enveloped by a golden glow emanating from the weapon. There is not enough energy in it. The princess looks at this scene with a frown. She wonders why this damn armor is talking. Who doesn't seem evil? She's interested in his name. The captain introduced himself, and then the girl reports that the armor has no names. She offers him cooperation, and Zhang Bao agrees on the condition that he will be given the same sword. Violet points to the castle the way they are holding. The building is located on a high hill, which is overgrown with green trees. According to legend, there is a sword there that can put an end to evil. The castle is full of cursed armor. The princess plan is to let Zhang Bao clear the way for them, and when the knights get their weapons, they won't need to be afraid of the captain. The man decides to look at this powerful weapon and therefore enthusiastically agrees. If Zhang Bao had Kai energy from his past life, then a walk to the castle would be much easier. The place they were heading to looks old and dilapidated. The walls were overgrown with moss. The building is gloomy and dark. The princess asks her soldiers to be vigilant. On the way inside the castle, Violet tells the legend of where the sword came from. In a time when there was no hope in the world, 100,000 people prayed to heaven for a miracle. It appeared to them, and now only the Chosen One can find the sword. This weapon is their last hope. Lord Carl, Princess Violet and Zhang Bao, who is walking in front, passes by a pile of armor that leads them like a path to the cherished sword. Excalibur, Zhang Bao looks at the magic sword and clearly sees the flow of Kai. This is a fairly high-level weapon, and therefore there is enough Kai in it for the captain to return home. The sword illuminates the rooms of the old castle with a golden glow, while it is stuck in a pile of human armor. Legend has it that only a real king is able to pull Excalibur out and put an end to the scourge of the cursed armor. Since ancient times, countless people have tried to take possession of it, but no one has succeeded. Princess Violet has only one attempt. They can save the world by gaining the powers of Excalibur. Having become human bones, she stretches her hand to the weapon and clasping its hilt with her palm, says that she lived for this moment. As soon as the girl reached him, the golden glow changed to orange, and then completely to red. The princess, continuing to hold the hilt, settles on her knees and feels that Excalibur is pulling all the vital forces out of her. He's about to devour her completely. Violet quickly realizes that she is not worthy of the legendary sword. Suddenly Zhang Bao puts his hand on her shoulder and throws the girl back with a powerful movement, which is immediately caught by Lord Carl. The captain takes the place of the princess. He understands that in this world they have not heard anything about Kai energy, so it is not surprising that no one was able to pull out a sword. Excalibur absorbed them and turned them into bones as soon as he sucked out the light energy. Only by controlling Kai, you can subdue the legendary weapon. Zhang Bao captured the attention of the knights and they stopped looking around. The princess shouts at them not to sleep and orders them to keep an eye on the surroundings. First you need to deal with the demonic armor. The knights attack the demons while Zhang Bao continues to try to pull out the sword. The wall to their right collapses and a monster about 13 meters high climbs out of it. The cursed grisly armor came to the rescue of his comrades. The demon scatters the knights with his powerful hands, turning them into mincemeat. The captain realizes how little time the soldiers have left, however. He cannot continue to admire the sword. Never before has a man seen a weapon with such great power absorbing Kai. It just so happened that Zhang Bao is the strongest Kai practitioner, which means he will be able to take possession of Excalibur. Violet is distracted by the captain, and the grizzly was able to get to her from behind at arm's length. She closes her eyes, ready to accept such an unexpected death, but the legendary sword pulled out of the stone in Zhang Bao's hands stops him and repels the attack. Excalibur's Kai has calmed down, now it is under control. It feels as if all the world's energy has been absorbed by the captain's body through this weapon. Here Zhang Bao feels the unexpected and at first he can't even believe it. Excalibur has absorbed not only the world Kai, but also the energy of the monster in front of him. The armor with the captain instead of the body sparkles with an orange flame, which Zhang Bao himself burned when he began to attack. The grizzly puts a paw in front of him. The man stretches out in front of him, wraps his other arm around him. Kai is the essence of all living beings, and a Kai practitioner can use it to strengthen himself, and now Zhang Bao, using this knowledge, decides to transform the energy of the sword into incredible power. 
Now the captain has an incredible speed that allows him to approach the enemy so that he does not notice it. To have an incredible destructive force, thanks to which a man knocks the cursed armor to the ground with one blow. However, these are all the basics of Kai. If you rearrange the flow of energy, twist it with your fingers, then you can create incredible techniques. Zhang Bao pulls back his sword and gathers Kai to strike with fire. The captain jumps and kills the monster. Now there is a pile of dust behind his back instead of a demon. But even it is not visible because of the radiance emanating from Zhang Bao. The plumage on the helmet develops like a victory flag. Lord Carl and the princess are standing nearby. A man can't help but notice what power their new acquaintance has. Violet doesn't answer him. She is amazed that Zhang Bao was able to use the power of Excalibur. Having finished with his work, the captain can return home. Folding his fingers in a special way, he applies the Kang Zin technique, a secret technique of movement. But again, nothing. Not enough Kai again. Zhang Bao rubs his head in bewilderment, looking at the sword, which has lost all its greatness that it radiated just a few moments ago, being a faithful companion in the battle with the demon. Maybe it happened because the secret technique took too much energy. In this case, it will not be difficult to make up for it. Zhang Bao only needs to leave the building and kill the remaining cursed armor. The princess begins to panic. There are too many opponents. They have surrounded her in the nights. However, she sees how the captain boldly goes alone against a huge army and analyzes his actions. First he pulled out his sword. And then with ease, as if he had been doing this all his life, he controlled Excalibur. Is he the king who will save their lands? Zhang Bao shouts that it's time to deal with all the demons. But Lord Card doubts that they can. There are too many opponents. It's simply impossible. However, if the captain starts to doubt, how dare he be called the strongest Kai practitioner? He breaks through the ranks of the enemy, fighting alone and without anyone's support. As the man expected, he can absorb the Kai of the cursed armor. The captain stops, attracted by the strange energy emanating from the corpses nearby. Then the frame of an old mirror appears in front of him. But inside, instead of a mirror, there is an inscription. You've got a new knight. Please confirm. Is this some kind of hallucination? The knights led by the princess, meanwhile, are fighting with the part that did not distract Zhang Bao. Violet says they won't die here, but grisly armor appears out of nowhere, and the difference in strength becomes simply colossal. If everything continues like this, then people will simply be destroyed. The captain is still trying to figure out the mysterious voice and the carved mirror. He examines his glowing sword and assumes that the voice is coming from it. Zhang Bao doesn't have much time to think about what kind of a new knight he is and what it all means. If it is useful, then the man will be able to manage it, and therefore he accepts the conditions. At the same moment, around the army of Princess Violet, to their great amazement, the already defeated corpses begin to rise. The knights take a defensive position, but they are well aware that with this scenario they will not be able to leave this battlefield alive. But corpses, instead of attacking people, start attacking their own. The difference between them outwardly is that the demons, like a collar, have a purple flame burning while a golden glow emanates from the tops of the animated corpses. Lowering her sword, Violet watches as the cursed armor kills each other. Zhang Bao stands in front of her, and she realizes with strange clarity that it all looks like the captain is controlling them. Zhang Bao himself is still trying to realize Excalibur's abilities. He not only absorbs Kai, but also commands the bodies of the defeated. The princess looks at how talented the cursed armor is and remembers some of the legends that were told to her as a child. This time the story is about the so-called King of Knights. According to legend, he can emit the most dazzling radiance on the battlefield. This is a hero combining strength and courage who used Excalibur to split the heavens. His name is the King of Knights. Little Violet admired this man, as she thought, the strongest among people is, of course, the king. However, as the man who told the princess this story said, a real ruler must have other qualities. From the trance of memories, the girl is brought out by the voice of Lord Carl, who reports that Zhang Bao, along with the raised corpses, killed a grizzly. The situation has changed dramatically. The knights rush to the attack with renewed vigor, inspired by the captain's help. Violet, look with admiration at your warriors, who just a few minutes ago were defeated and suppressed, and now they are fighting on the second wind that has opened. Zhang Bao stops in the middle of the battle, hoping that this time he has collected enough Kai to move. The captain uses the secret art of Kang Zin. With his radiance, he attracts the attention of the cursed armor. Excalibur releases a column of flame. In this flame, the body of Zhang Bao appears, who, after absorbing Kai, feels as before. Folding his fingers in a special way, 
he summons the call of lightning and destroys the remaining opponents with a natural disaster. The shockwave sends dust and pebbles towards the knights, but Violet doesn't see anything in front of her anyway. In her mind, she talks about the so-called King of Knights, who can emit the most dazzling radiance on the battlefield. He also used Excalibur to split the heavens using the power of lightning. The knights rejoice. The princess still remembers that the king, although he should be the strongest, but he should have slightly different qualities. For example, to give the others courage and hope, as Jang Bao did. It is these qualities that the captain possesses, as the girl could see. But the savior's mood is in decline. Even though he used a secret technique and absorbed all the Kai, why is there still not enough energy for the movement technique? An old mirror keeps popping up in front of his face, in the center of which is written, Squire. After that, a golden glow covers the armor, and the next moment Jang Bao finds himself in a place where there is no sunlight, only dark space, and the ground under his feet. The captain examines his hands and realizes that he is in the body as it was before death in the last world. The mirror informs that he is in the inner world of Excalibur. The glow of the sword disappears, and now the captain sees that he is standing in some kind of dungeon called the Hall of Camelot. A female voice happily says that the squire has finally come. The girl in front with curly blonde hair and bangs on one side, a tight white floor-length dress and red long sleeves. She is the spirit of Excalibur's consciousness. Zhang Bao can call her Vivian. Since the captain is now the master of the sword, he is also the master of Vivian. Although Zhang Bao had encountered many magical items with his own consciousness, he had never heard of an independent space inside a magic weapon. Apparently, this field of consciousness consists entirely of Kai and mental power, so Zhang Bao's appearance is similar to the one he remembered himself. The captain asks Vivian why she brought him here, because he was looking for a way back to his world. To answer this question, the spirit of the sword brought him here. She pulls a candle out of her long sleeves. Vivian says that this flame shows how much mana is in Zhang Bao's body right now. He is extremely dissatisfied with how little it is, although he collected it in battle. Vivian patiently explains that in order for the captain to use the secret movement technique, he needs to light a candle so that it illuminates the entire hall of Camelot. Zhang Bao covers his face with his hand. Vivian immediately swarms around him and tries to cheer him up because she is the captain's servant. The man says that this is not necessary at all and decides at this moment that from now on he will focus on absorbing Kai with Excalibur. Vivian happily raises her hands to the top. The cursed armor will not resist the owner of the legendary sword, and even the four-eyed one will win. According to rumors, the four-eyed one is the demon who caused the tragedy with the cursed armor, and as the name implies, he has four eyes. Jiang Bao immediately assumes that this is the bastard who killed him. However, even if it's not him, the four-eyed one is most likely connected to the demon that destroyed the captain's world. This monster killed the Zhang Bao clan members and moved him here. He will take revenge. Even if the connection between these demons is weak, the captain must find out. Vivian clutches her heart, amazed at how hot her new owner is. As a servant, she should praise the captain. Zhang Bao asks her to stop doing this. He then orders the girl to send him back. Vivian touches his forehead to his master's forehead. She will serve him until the captain becomes king. Zhang Bao did not think about becoming a king at all, because it is no longer easy to be the leader of Kang Sin. The last thing the captain hears from her before returning from the world of Excalibur is the king once, the king always. When a man fully returns to reality, he sees the kneeling knights with a princess in front of him and does not understand at all what they are doing. Violet refers to him as the manager of the cursed armor, chosen by Excalibur, shining on the battlefield and cleaving the heavens. She prays to him that Zhang Bao will save their lands from the scourge of the cursed armor and become king. The captain recalls that recently they attacked him and called him cursed armor, and now they brand them the future king. Violet wholeheartedly asks for forgiveness. If Zhang Bao was able to take possession of the sword, then he is a true king. The captain grumbles that there are too many problems but does not say it out loud. A new goal that a man faces is to learn the world order of the world. The first question he asks is where did the cursed armor they were constantly facing come from? The princess is surprised, doesn't everyone know that? The captain admits that he was transported from another world and then it only generates more puzzled faces. Zhang Bao decides not to go into details. Violet says that 10 years ago, something strange appeared in the sky, like a scarlet star, and after that, cursed armor appeared, which began to attack people. The cursed armor destroyed vast territories, uprooted entire nations. Thousands of people were left without homes and families. The survivors say that the cursed armor was commanded by a four-eyed demon. Zhang Bao interrupts the story at this point, again recalling the four-eyed demon. 
Is he also the target of the princess and her army? So it is, but they don't know anything else about the monster. Initially, Violet's plan was to get Excalibur, and then go north to Kingston to replenish the ranks of soldiers and continue north into the heart of the disaster, where a decisive battle will take place. Kingston is one of the nations destroyed by the armor, and if survivors are found in it, the army will be able to learn more about the four, I demon. Zhang Bao is eager to fight. In order to light Vivian's candle, he needs to kill many more. Besides, he will be able to learn more about this demon. He agrees to go with the princess to Kingston. The girl makes a fiery bow. This time, with the help of the candidate for the throne and Excalibur, they will put an end to the nation of cursed armor. The army is moving out, and the cursed armor killed by Zhang Bao is following us. Oh, is this the power of the sword? At the same time, the knights are extremely dissatisfied with the behavior of the captain. He sits astride smaller demons, forcing them to carry themselves instead of walking themselves. In fact, a man is not lazy, he meditates, restoring Kai energy in this way. It absorbs the spiritual Kai of all elements. Although this is a slow way of collecting, sooner or later it will have an effect. Inhale and exhale. Suddenly, near Zhang Bao's face, Vivian's cute face appears, delighted that the owner has returned. The captain stands in the Hall of Camelot and holds a maid in his arms. It seems that this movement happens involuntarily due to meditation. Now someone else is here with him and Vivian the collected corpses have also moved into the sword's consciousness. The captain is angry because of their appearance, but the blonde asks not to worry. The armor is here because they are related to Zhang Bao. Their Kai has been added to the man's Kai, and Vivian wants to show it, and for that he takes out a candle. The captain is not happy with what he saw. He throws the girl on his shoulder and collects light energy in his hand, saying that with such grains, the right amount of a man will not accumulate soon. Comparing with the cultivation level in his world, he is now at the level of initial Kai. Zhang Bao examines the space that he will need to fill and immediately turns to Vivian having fun, asking her to get off, but she does not, because in this way she shows complete obedience to the owner. Touching his forehead, as before, the maid informs him that someone is looking for him and asks him to return when the captain needs him. This girl, however, does not help Zhang Bao at all. Opening his eyes are in the place where they should be. He looks at the bowl of soup in front of him, held out by the princess. Everyone is having dinner and recuperating, so she brought it to him, although he probably won't even be able to eat. The captain non-ironically replies that, yes, he won't be able to, now he doesn't even have a mouth and limbs, actually, either. Although a man is hungry, he can fill his needs with the help of UI. It's even better than the food. He demonstrates his skill and the princess tries to imitate him badly. The captain is only more convinced that mortals cannot understand Kai. Arrival in Kingston. The reception is not too warm. The army is immediately attacked by the cursed armor. Of course, Jang Bao easily deals with opponents. An antique mirror shows the inscription, You've got a new knight. Please accept. The captain accepts. The territory is quickly cleared and all thanks to the new king. The man's gaze falls on tall old statues in the form of people with crowns. The princess explains that these are the eleven greatest kings of these lands. Once they gathered in this place to determine who was the greatest. However, after the disaster, no one heard from them anymore. Violet says that if they find at least one of them, it will help them a lot. The screams of people distract them from the story. They are crowded against the wall and look at Zhang Bao with fear. He rejoices at the survivors who have appeared. After all, they can be asked about the four-eyed. As soon as he takes a step towards the mortals, they drive him away with screams. Suddenly, a huge man or armor appears in front of the captain. It is not clear yet, who shouts with a belligerent look that it is necessary to kill the cursed armor, and this proves that there is a man inside. He hits the captain backhand. Zhang Bao is not one of the timid ones. He attacks a person in response, because just because a man has 50 cursed armor and with their Kai, he should be second in energy. Zhang Bao cuts off the opponent's head. The princess looks at the face of a man with shoulder-length gray hair who has appeared from under the helmet. If you look closely, you can see a grid of scars on the face of the one with a rough scar near the eye. Someone asks about whether it is the king's mouth. He is immediately apologized for the fact that such a gross mistake occurred, because the king was just trying to protect the survivors. He has already risen from his knees and is trying to calm the crying children. The king asks them to stop apologizing. Roth admits that he became worried when he saw Zhang Bao running the army of the cursed armor. It is very, very good for the princess's knights that he is so strong. The captain asks if this is the same king, and Violet says that although he does not look like the way the girl remembers him, he is definitely the king. 
Besides, it's not easy, but the most influential of the eleven, he stands in the very center of the Statue of Kings. He is the monarch of Kingston. Roth looks at the princess and says that although he has changed a lot, Violet has remained the same. He remembers holding her in his arms when she was just a baby. The princess's knights are whispering that this is the same king who killed half of the continent, and the one who helped Violet's father create a state. The girl invites the king to go with them, because with his power they will definitely be able to find other kings and end the trouble of the cursed armor once and for all. King Roth admits that the eleven kings have already actually united, but were exterminated by demons. It was a bloodbath. The ground was covered with blood as if someone had poured it out of a bucket. The king's face is distorted, although he is proud of his determination to suppress such a large army, but the cursed armor cannot be stopped. Roth's figure slouches, his eyes burn with death and hopelessness. The princess's eyes widen in horror. She is amazed that the cursed armor cannot be stopped. Meanwhile, the king continues that the alliance of the eleven has fallen and there is no one left in the whole world who could resist the cursed armor. While Zhang Bao is doing nothing, Lord Carl asks about the soldiers in Wangxi City. The army is here to make an alliance. However, the mouth besieges him, everyone has fallen, only he remains. The mood of the princess is in decline. They hope for the help of at least eleven kings, but in the end it turns out that everyone fell when faced with the cursed armor. But Roth's voice brings her out of despair, even though he himself said that everyone has fallen. But there are survivors, Kingston has not yet been captured. As long as there are statues of Kingston, Roth will defend their thousand-year history with all his might. Therefore, he wants to remove all the cursed armor from this place in order to provide shelter to the surviving residents. The princess says that King Roth is her standard. Everyone used to think that he would be the owner of Excalibur. Some knight grumbles that compared to Zhang Bao, he is more suitable. There is no more time to rest, it's time to escort the survivors to the church. This is the only safe place in Kingston, because everyone gathers there. The people they lead look like crazy and for the most part it's because there's a damn armor captain walking right in front of them. Zhang Bao tries to appear friendly after these words, but only provokes the anger of King Roth. Although the princess trusts him, the man himself will never be able to do this, after how many he has killed on the battlefield. The king says that if he suspects something is wrong, he will not hesitate to point the blade of the sword at the captain. But the man is not discouraged. Even though they just met, Roth already hates him. But Zhang Bao can't do anything about it, because after all, he really looks like a cursed armor. People almost reached the church. The path was greatly facilitated by the fact that there were no demons along the way. The princess reminds them that they did not meet them because Zhang Bao single-handedly destroyed all the demons in the area. The princess was asking Zhang Bao why he still wanted to help King Roth, even after what he said. The captain says that there is nothing special in this, because he put his life on the line defending his people and his country. That's why he does not hold a grudge against him. But he also has his own advantage in this. The survivors are attracted by the cursed armor, and with the help of them the captain can collect Kai energy, although they are quite weak for him. A man walks through the streets of the city, killing demons along the way. From the roof, the cursed armor jumps on him, which immediately dissects the space where Zhang Bao was standing a second ago. He jumps aside and looks at the opponent. He's bigger and more intimidating than the others, and the man can't help but notice that the demon doesn't look like the others. The armor attacks again, and the captain blocks it with Excalibur. The demon knows how to use weapons like a human. Already something more interesting. However, strength is only the first stage of cultivation. Knocking the demon to the shoulder blades, he plunges his sword into his chest, easily dealing with the enemy. Zhang Bao raises his weapon to eye level to check how much Kai, compared to other monsters, has gathered. A voice from under the captain's feet attracts his attention. Looking down, he sees someone's corpse, which is inside the cursed armor. Zhang Bao from the roof asks King Roth about why there was a man inside. He thought they were empty. The princess is also not a little surprised by this fact. The king calls them possessed by the cursed armor. As a rule, there is nothing under them, but this is only in its original form. When demons find a body, they consume it. They become stronger and take away the energy of a person. Having opened its mouth, the cursed armor sucks the bodies inside itself and does not let go. Such types are much stronger than ordinary ones and there are a lot of them on the battlefield. The captain notices that after absorbing the cursed armor, the body may get out of control. But the body he found seems to be exhausted. The cursed armor are disgusting creatures, but Zhang Bao can't help but note that he is the same now. 
The army and the survivors reach the church. Although this place looks abandoned, it is quite comfortable inside. There is food and water. Survivors even have parties, as King Roth says. He is also happy that there is a place left where he could relax. The area around the building is fortified. There is only one hidden entrance, through which they enter now. The king loudly announces that he has returned. But when he goes inside, he sees no people, only a bunch of cursed armor. He stops and can't believe it. Where are the survivors? Roth had fought so hard to keep them safe, and now what? Everything is ruined by these bastards. Three demons attack the old king at once, and he does nothing to defend himself. Zhang Bao appears in front of him, repelling the attack. Roth mumbles about how this could have happened. Why did this happen? His country, his people, his knights, his wife and children are all dead. The only thing he treasured was taken away. He furiously attacks the armor, but the princess asks him to stop. There are too many of them, even the possessed here. Zhang Bao jumps forward. He uses Kai absorption and when the iron armor falls off, people fall out of it, inside of which there are survivors. Many of them are still breathing. The princess rushes to help one of them, but the man tells her to run away from here. She reassures him, King Roth and Zhang Bao are here, so everything will be fine. The survivor reports that there are not only cursed armor here, and, turning his neck at a strange angle, asks the company to be more careful. The captain and the king have dealt with most of it. Zhang Bao asks the old man if he is okay, but he does not answer, only constantly repeats the words cursed armor like a mantra. His mind clouded, his thoughts turned red. He attacks the captain, and he asks why the king is fighting with him. Roth bends his knees, putting his hand to his head and a pink flame begins to develop behind his back, which all the damned armor has. Is it the evil energy on the king's body? The princess, still standing next to the wounded man, notices that the mouth is strange. The survivor tells that their king is not the same as before since he returned from the battle. He brought them to church, promised protection, and his mood changed dramatically. He began attacking them indiscriminately, scaring people only more. The mouth attracted the cursed armors and watched them devour people. Many were frightened and ran away, but the king caught them and returned them. The princess realizes that all this time people were shouting not because of Zhang Bao, but because of King Roth. How could this happen? The captain finds out what the problem is. The old man has cursed armor on his body, and therefore he is obsessed with them. This armor, compared to others, is a completely different story. Even though he is now a demon himself, the king continues to wish death to his own kind and attacks Zhang Bao over and over again. The captain sees that he has lost the remnants of his mind. It's even easier for him. The battle of Bao against the scoundrel begins. The king cuts the air in front of him with a powerful sword blow, attacking the captain. Zhang Bao begins to suspect that his attacks are ineffective. He cuts down the opponent, but it was like hitting a pile of stones with a wooden stick. The transformation allowed the company to be covered with Kai, which greatly increased the man's defense. Now the armor of the company looks like the needles of a hedgehog, on top of which a pink flame burns. He attacks the captain and knocks him to the ground. The inhabitants look at their king and do not recognize him. Now it's not their protector, but a real monster. The princess is more worried about the captain. Zhang Bao jumps up from the ground and immediately runs back a few meters. With the help of the company's armor, you can not only defend yourself, but also attack. And this is extremely unfair to the captain. Is it really a shell? Well, if the king wants to fight one-on-one, -on -one, then fine. He will have a duel. The captain summons the power of Excalibur. For him to use Kai to become cooler, at least the basics of the technique. Zhang Bao uses a Kai control kick, a flying kick and attacks the king. He conducts this attack for the second time, since the first one did not succeed. The captain stands face to face with his opponent and asks how the mouth has come to this. In that case, Zhang Bao will wake him up now. They fight with each other as if they are dancing a purple and orange dance. A powerful blow, and the armor of both the king and the captain shatter into pieces. Violet is horrified. Both kings are defeated. Excalibur's forces are gathering him back. The fact that Zhang Bao was blown up doesn't mean anything. He's just a shell. The captain inserts a company into the armor and uses a secret sang technique, lightning drop. The king falls to his knees, defeated, and the sword begins to absorb his kai. The golden glow completely envelops Zhang Bao and it seems that he sees the memories of King Roth. He hears a voice that says that even after forming an alliance, they are not comparable to the four-eyed demon. Any conflicts in the future will lead to deaths. In these memories, the army of the cursed armor is numerous and fierce, and King Roth can't do anything about it. But a man can't die here, he just has to go back to Kingston. If he is not there, then Roth's house will be destroyed. Even if the cursed armor is not destroyed, the king will defend his house to the very end. 
When the king returns to his native land, news comes to him that the cursed armor has attacked Kingston. There was a fierce battle. He ordered his men to hide in the church. At some point, Roth stops in search of his soldiers and realizes that only he survived. There's nothing but damned armor around him. Only one thought can be traced among all the memories, to protect Kingston and destroy the demons. The cursed Kai is coming out of the armor, however, maybe it's just the king's imagination. But he feels a surge of energy, which is fueled by the four-eyed demon behind his back. Now the cursed armor looks somehow different in the eyes of Rotav. Human figures are more visible in them and they have become more numerous. All demons must disappear. He didn't hear the screams of his men, who begged him not to do it. The road after the king turns scarlet with the blood of his people. Suddenly Roth's mind clears. Oh, where is he? Where's the damn armor? The survivors run away from their king screaming, and this throws the man into shock. He is their leader. He will protect them. Memories are interrupted. Zhang Bao looks at the sword and at Roth sitting on his knees. The king wholeheartedly wanted to protect his subjects, but he was possessed by evil Kai, destroyed it and does not remember it. In the end, the king regretted his actions. A real tragedy. People ask if King Roth is defeated. He captured them like a damned armor, and they absolutely did not expect that he was in league with them. Zhang Bao stands up for him. Everything is not what it seems. When the captain wants to tell already what happened, the king says to run. Escape as soon as possible. Roth reports that they can see everything. They're almost here. Zhang Bao and Violet raise their eyes to the sky. Up there, a pointed star of purple color flares up with a bright flame. A huge amount of Kai energy is flying right into them. After running away, the fallen comet forms a small crater and a shock wave that carries a cloud of dust and stones towards the knights. Someone rises from a fallen star, leaning on a sword. It immediately becomes clear that this is a person. The princess quickly realizes who is standing in front of them. The second of the eleven kings, the commander of all armies, King Bai Kai. But Roth had said that the other ten kings had fallen, so what was he doing here? Apparently, he, like the previous king, is just a puppet obsessed with cursed armor. The former commander stands in the flame that accompanies all demons and there is no mercy in him. Lord Karl orders to prepare, the battle is not over yet. The king says what Excalibur and Rhoda feel, there can be no mistake. The man strikes, calling for a stampede of hundreds of armor and demons run out from under his feet, climbing on top of each other in a desire to get to the prey first. The demons read out a strange poem, one rider. There will be no bones left. Ten riders. There will be no blood left. A hundred riders. No one will be left alive. The last lines are read by the army commander himself. He reaches out to Excalibur, asking him to come back. Zhang Bao stands in front of him. There is a huge difference in height between the king and the captain. The damned one asks to give him the sword, otherwise he will destroy everything here. Zhang Bao says they are his subjects. He will protect them like a true king. The commander raises his sword. Is it a mortal who dares to disobey the order of one of the eleven? The captain is not afraid of this, as if he had never seen kings. An old mirror from Excalibur appears with the usual request to accept a new knight. Zhang Bao instructs accepts and points a weapon at the king. He will fight and not alone, now his mouth is behind him. The commander asks the company if he will also disobey him. However, what does it mean to disobey? Zhang Bao advises the enemy to be simpler. The princess's army is also eager to fight. While their king is fighting the rebel commander, they will attack the cursed armor. They will defeat Bai Kai altogether. The cursed king is very impressed that the captain can control demons, but there is no equal in the strength of Bai Kai. He uses the secret flow technique of the cursed armor of the king. The demons form a mountain, at the top of which is Bai Kai. Zhang Bao regains consciousness. He doesn't know how the captain did it, but why did he let him regain his humanity? Zhang Bao admits that he should repent of his sins, but death is not an option at all. Roth should be responsible for those who believed in him, because he is none other than the king. A man should live, overcoming pain and suffering. Actions to atone for their sins. They fight side by side. The captain won't admit why he gave the company a second chance. He still won't understand that he no longer sees the distortion of Kai in his body. There is no more time for empty conversations. Zhang Bao attacks Bai Kai, who asks if King Roth is running away anymore, as he did during the battle with his fellow rulers, to take care of himself. But the commander doesn't blame him at all. On the contrary, Bai Kai feels sorry for his former colleague. When he escaped, he made contact with the cursed armor. Bai Kai chooses Rhoda as his target. He strikes with a sword and tells about the four-eyed lord, the highest being in this world. Obeying him is the only sure way. The four-eyed demon is the real order of this world. Roth asks not to turn Bai Kai into what he has become. 
How will the file look at it? This does not enlighten the commander-in-chief. The subjects will be proud of him because they gave their lives to become part of his power. The skulls of people really burst out of the flame of Bai Kai and their screams before death are heard. Princess Violet is having a hard time looking at this. How could he use his people for such purposes? Zhang Bao clings to the words about the four-eyed demon. He asks to tell him everything that Bai Kai knows, otherwise he may not expect anything good. But for the captain's opponent, these words are just an empty sound. Excalibur absorbs the commander-in-chief's energy, but it feels as if it is infinite. There is no end to it, no edge, it does not weaken. On the contrary, every exhalation of Zhang Bao takes away a lot of Kai from him. He crosses swords with Bai Kai and realizes that his cursed armor is inferior to the armor of the king. In the previous world, Zhang Bao had the fourth level of Kai cultivation, and his opponent, the commander-in-chief, had the ninth. The difference in strength is enormous. Bai Kai explains this phenomenon by the fact that it contains the energies of a four-eyed demon. He orders the captain to obey, because he is not worthy of owning such a legendary weapon as Excalibur. The princess attacks the king from behind, responding by saying that he is not worthy to possess him. The damned one remembers her, Princess Cariona, who has now taken the wrong side. Now it's no wonder that all a girl can do is watch her country being destroyed. Violet doesn't believe he could say that. Baikai says that she does not even see the reality of what is happening. Suddenly the world turns black, two more cursed armor appeared on the sides of the king. He informs them that they are already here, King Ullens, King Kalades, King Nance. That is, all the other eleven kings. Is the princess surprised by this? Besides Roth, the others received the blessing of their four-eyed overlord. They seem to have become stronger and more powerful. People were late. Ten great kings team up with each other to fight Zhang Bao. He swears to himself, there is not enough Kai for everyone. Even the captain cannot cope with one. However, he does not give up. He uses the secret technique of Kang Zin and then runs away. The captain picks up the princess, saying that he used the secret spell to increase her speed. Now they cannot defeat such strong opponents, even with Excalibur. Kings let these fools escape. Those who do not understand the greatness of the four-eyed ruler should be killed. But they can just get Excalibur out of the stone. The largest of the kings plunges his sword into the ground and it is shaken by a terrible tremor. Everything is starting to collapse, as is the exit from Kingston. Even the statues of the eleven kings have fallen. Zhang Bao tells them to run, and he will detain them as much as he can. He's trying to reason with the rulers, didn't the statues represent their honor? The captain will not allow such a legacy to be destroyed before his eyes. The king's mouth covers the boulders flying into Zhang Bao. For him, statues are a relic of the past that will one day fall and pave the way for a new generation. Roth holds them with his back, saying that this is how he will atone for all his sins. This is his last wish before going to the ancestral world. If he happens to see Zhang Bao again, then Roth wants to call him king. He doesn't say it out loud, but the man thanks the captain for the fact that it is thanks to him that the cursed armor will be destroyed. Finally, the king shouts to the princess that she will become an excellent knight. Violet remembers those few moments spent side by side with him, how he lied to them, how he changed right before their eyes. But all this is complete nonsense. Roth was always himself. With tears in her eyes, she says goodbye to him, but does not dare to say it out loud. Ten kings ask their former colleague why he thinks he can stop them. They will kill them anyway, whether the mouth gets in the way or not. The true ruler only laughs in response. He is extremely pleased with the current situation. He remembers how they argued for years on the topic of who of the eleven is the greatest king. In order to eventually get the sad answer, no one. There was no such person among them. It's so funny, right? Someone in response asks him the question that does Roth really see the greatest in that guy with an Excalibur? What does he have that they don't? Are all the qualities of a real king? Roth's words may seem absurd, but they, the mortal minions of the four-eyed demon, will never understand this. And then he strikes one of his former friends from the foot. Violet's knights ask if they can't move faster. What if they catch up? But running, according to Zhang Bao, is pointless. I wonder if there is a place nearby where he can restore his Kai. The princess reports about an abandoned castle nearby. She directs them to Carrion, a city destroyed by the cursed armor. The place Violet had once called home. The princess's knights are really gone. No one expected the mouth to delay the eleven kings so much. Ollens is ordered to find Excalibur. This king looks like a cross between a human and cursed armor, the head of a demon and the naked torso of a man with a cross-shaped scar on his right chest. He complains that their Kai is too weak, the king will only be able to determine the direction. However, this is enough for Bai Kai. In any case, those who escaped will not escape. The army is forced to slow down, Zhang Bao has fallen and is not getting up. 
Violet is fussing over him, but she is powerless to help in any way. The last thing the captain said was that he needed time to meditate, and then he just fell down. Meanwhile, Zhang Bao is transferred to the Hall of Camelot, where he expected to be after cultivation. Vivian pretends to whine about being so sad. When the captain asks what she is doing, the girl bursts into sweet speeches about how he must be so sad after such a loss, and as his servant, she cries and is sad for him. Vivian has built a small altar with a portrait of Zhang Bao in armor, and there is a pile of candles and food from the modern world at the bottom. The man is not sure that she does not send a curse on him. The next moment, all skepticism disappears from him, and the captain covers his face with his hand. He miscalculated, did not think that there would be someone so strong in this world, and even more than one. These kings need Excalibur, and they will stop at nothing, even exterminated their own people. To defeat them, Zhang Bao must significantly increase his Kai. The darkness of the Camelot Hall confirms how little energy the captain has right now. Previously, this place was filled with cursed knights, and now it is empty, except for Vivian and Zhang Bao. However, they were all devastated, not just the hall. Vivian explains that knights imprisoned in Excalibur are equal to Kai in a man's true body. In the last battle, he had exhausted them too much. After Zhang Bao absorbed their energy, they disappeared and left the girl alone in the sword space. When asked if the Kai that the captain kept for returning to his world has been absorbed, Vivian giggles nastily, and then takes out a very small light, the size of a woman's little finger, securely hidden in Vivian's sleeves. The girl is able to control how Zhang Bao's Kai is used because she is the consciousness of Excalibur. When the captain's energy was absorbed in battle, Vivian did not use the delayed Kai, but began to expend life support Kai, and that is why the man's body was so exhausted and now in such a deplorable state. Zhang Bao, to the maid's surprise, lets out a relaxed sigh. If he can still return to his world to avenge his brothers and sisters, then a small donation of vitality is worth nothing. Besides, the captain's true body is already dead. He notices that earlier the place for storing Kai in favor of moving was different. Vivian happily explains that this is all because the upper limit has increased. She made it up herself. Although Zhang Bao has no Kai now, during the battle with Bai Kai, the energy storage capacity increased, so the shell changed. The captain thoughtfully stretches his hand in the candle. As soon as he touches it, a flame of great power ignites, which throws Vivian back, and Zhang Bao himself barely stays on his feet. This is quite expected. The so-called upper limit is the same as the steps of the Kang Zin technique. Until you overcome the upper one and reach a certain stage, it will not matter how much Kai is spent. The level will not change. Gathering his energy in the palm of his hand, the captain reaches the seventh stage of Kai cultivation at once. Vivian worshipped their master's Kai. Zhang Bao replies that she looks like this to intimidate others. He doesn't have enough Kai right now, so he can't use the appropriate skills, even though he has reached the seventh stage but he can absorb enough Kai and reach the eighth level of cultivation, will be considered a master. The captain already sees how he will be called the unsurpassed Zhang Bao, and he himself will be a head taller than those ten kings. It's time to deal with all of them. Vivian tells him to get energy using breathing techniques as soon as possible. Or does the owner suddenly want the maid to help him? The girl pulls her plump lips to him, but the captain does not notice her advances. He reflects on the fact that the basic methods of Kai cultivation are too slow and, by the way, they are being pursued, so there is even less time. Fortunately, after reaching the fifth stage of cultivation, Zhan Bao can use the secret technique of Kang Zin from the alchemy section. In his two hands, he collects round balls that look like delicate buds of golden-colored roses. Although the captain had tried to create pills before, it turned out to be a disaster. How does it all happen? After reaching the fifth level of cultivation, the master can better control the TS and produce pills with a wonderful effect. Some of them can even increase the absorption of Kai so much that in one breath you can collect as much energy as is usually absorbed in a day. Now the captain needs to get the raw materials for such a pill. Vivian immediately offers options, her hair, maybe saliva or a loving look. However, Zhang Bao prefers to look outside. Touching their foreheads, he finally says that although it is strange, but the captain is sincerely grateful to his maid for her help. Vivian does not remain in debt. She replies that it does not cost her anything at all, and she no longer wants to tease him. She also asks a question in which she wonders why, since her master needs Kai so much. He just won't take it from the night girl. Zhang Bao promises to use this option only in the most extreme case, since Violet already has little energy. When the captain wakes up, he sees the princess in front of him again. But something new has appeared on his armor. The armor is patched with pieces of iron, 
and children's drawings of flowers are painted on them. The princess reports that Zhang Bao's body has suffered and worries if he has gotten better. The captain notices that the girl is really young. She even painted on bandages, but she didn't do it at all. The bandage was applied by Lord Carl. He finally took off his helmet and under it was not the face of some terrible troll, as the captain expected him to see, but a quite handsome black-haired young man with a crop haircut, long hawk eyebrows and an ugly wide scar on his neck. The guy justifies that if it wasn't for the princess's order, he wouldn't have done it. Zhang Bao asks to explain it for the cute flowers. Carl says that it was necessary to decide, and therefore he chose something cute. The captain quickly changes the drawing to something related to his world. He asks why they don't move, and the young man seems annoyed by this question. Not everyone here is like Zhang Bao, knights need rest and food. Carl says that he will prepare food for everyone in a minute, and the captain immediately asks where he will get everything from. The answer is very quick. The lord just shakes food and kitchen utensils out of his huge armor, and the princess declares that Carl carries everything with him. As a result, whole grain bread, freshly caught rabbit, beans and spices turn out to be on the tables of the army. The last ingredient is very expensive, so Carl wears the key to the box with them on his belt. Due to the high price of spices, only experienced chefs work with them. As if, like some kind of potion, Carl adds spices and grinds them with special care. The Lord pronounces the rules before eating, which state that you should not forget to use personal appliances during the meal. You should cut meat and bread with a knife, hold the food with your left hand, but do not put it in your mouth. To eat, you need to use a spoon or fork in your right hand. No need to sit too close to each other. You can talk, but within reasonable limits. In special cases, it is allowed to do whatever you want. After sniffing the food, Zhang Bao realizes that spices are what you need to create a pill. He gets up from his seat and demands to give him a box with them. But Carl is categorical. These things are the most important treasure after the princess. The captain insists, because he will not use them for cooking, but in order to defeat the eleven kings. When Zhang Bao creates his weapon, Carl insists that he take care of the spices as much as possible, because the captain is just wasting them. After some time, strange-looking lumps with faces appear on the man's hand, which he presents as the key to defeating kings. Pills increase the absorption of Kai flow. If you eat a few, you can even prolong your life, smooth your skin and cleanse your intestines. There's nothing like these little things in the captain's world. The princess calls the weapons goat poo. Looking closer, Zhang Bao realizes that they really are similar. Apparently, he forgot something. The captain picks a flower that may be able to become a substitute but in his world he has never met such. Violet picks up a bud and calls it a black tulip. There used to be a lot of these flowers, but after the cursed armor came, the tulips began to wither. Only Carrion Castle had to have something left. This black flower is a symbol of chivalry, because the birthplace of the princess is the birthplace of the first knight. Many people come there with tulips to show respect. Zhang Bao thinks that the first knight was a princess, but he is severely mistaken. The discoverer in knighthood was called Lancelot. The captain decides to absorb the Kai of the first, as this will significantly increase the stage. Well, we rested, we can continue on the road. On Vrit, besides the eleven kings, there are others. Violet's father, King Lyod, is one of them. Lyod has always helped the poor and supported justice. Many fled to his state, seeking help and shelter. The king's city grew. Eventually, it grew to such a size that it became visible for hundreds of miles and bore the name Carrion. However, even his remains are not visible now. On the way to the ruined city, Zhang Bao does not have any Kai left. It feels like a strong thirst when you walk through a hot desert. But not only this thirst leads the captain to Carrion, he seeks to find the first knight and the black tulip. The princess leads Zhang Bao and her army to Carrion's remains. All a man sees is a pile of stones, and he can't see the flowers he needs. Violet explains this, the cursed army destroyed the whole city to the ground. Why didn't the first knight defend his city? It turns out that Lancelot died in battle against the cursed army. In those days, his shining red armor struck terror into thousands of enemies and he was not crushed. But now only burnt fragments remain. Lancelot used to teach the princess, and to die in battle, sacrificing himself, is a great honor. Noticing some plants that have sprouted roots right in the stones, Zhang Bao rushes to them hoping that these are the same black tulips. However, instead of small flowers, the plants suddenly open their buds, becoming the size of a human head. It turns out to be the cursed armor that swallowed the tulips, but the captain feels their energy inside and decides to check if it is possible to get them. 
Using Kai turns out to be not the best idea. There is so little of it, and the flowers devour its remnants. It's time to use the pills, although not ready to the end without flowers. In addition, there will probably be side effects. The buds are closing. Now it's just iron sprouts that look extremely suspicious. Zhang Bao doesn't care what they look like. The main thing is to get black tulips. He breaks several buds and then cursed armor appears from them. While everyone is scared of such an unexpected turn, the captain orders them to get away and destroys everything around. The knights cannot help but note that he behaves like a drunkard who shows his true face. Violet notices a granite with the symbol of King Kralins, also known as the King of the Rose, one of the eleven who was very ambitious and wanted to conquer all the lands of the continent. He was a ruthless monster. The damned buds must be the work of Kralins. Perhaps he is somewhere nearby. Zhang Bao continues to behave like a madman. Sweet delicious damn armor, come here. The captain is starving. He uses the secret technique of Kang Zin, a tornado strike, scattering his opponents right and left. Some special frisky flower attacks a man with a sword. Another large cursed armor from the back jumps on the princess. Carl covers her, but then other demon companions rush to the rescue. They turn out to be too persistent. However, suddenly one of them just takes and attacks the other cursed armor. There's clearly something wrong with him. The big sprout suppresses the evil Kai for some reason. The outer layer of it begins to collapse and then red armor rises from a pile of stones. Lancelot himself. Tears come to the princess's eyes. Is this really her favorite teacher? Lancelot recognizes Violet. Zhang Bao is lying relaxed on the ground. Half, finished pills cause the side effect, terrible hunger. The ground on which the captain is lying suddenly turns out to be Carl's knee. Now there is no princess next to the man. At this moment she enjoys the company of another. Lancelot is hanging on the girl's shoulder and seems to recognize only her from all those present. Zhang Bao asks if Violet's teacher should be dead, and the princess is unsure of the answer. However, the captain feels the evil Kai of King Kralins from him. The man suggests that, probably, these two met in battle and Lancelot lost, becoming possessed instead of not dying. And now the true Kai in his body is fighting the evil energy of King Clarence, and even if the evil one is suppressed, the spirit of the red armor is unstable. Lancelot has only the most important memories and views. Knights celebrate the honor and sacrifice of the first. Even in such a half-dead state, he protects the princess. Violet bitterly notices that he hasn't changed a bit. Zhang Bao jumps up to Lancelot and asks him to let him absorb his Kai. He dies just like Excalibur. The red armor clings to the sword. Lancelot turns to the captain, saying that he did not fight like a knight, and bothered the princess for all sorts of trifles. Apparently, this was done without any sense of honor. Lancelot asks for an answer to the question, will Zhang Bao die for the sake of honor? The captain fleetingly says that he probably would have done it depending on the situation. And now he's damn hungry. He absolutely doesn't care about honor at the moment. However, Lancelot suppresses Excalibur's power. Can he control this Kai in a way that a sword cannot absorb it? Meanwhile, the knight is convinced of his opinion that Zhang Bao has no honor, so whatever he needed from Lancelot, the captain never received his recognition. It's all too much for Zhang Bao. It's incredibly difficult to get black tulips. It's even more difficult to get the Kai of the first knight, and the man is so hungry. Will he, the leader of the Kang Xin sect, die of hunger in this world? The princess stands over Zhang Bao, who has fainted. Violet says he needs a tincture of tulip and those balls of sheep manure. Lancelot asks why a girl needs such a person who is not ready to make sacrifices for the sake of fame. In response, Violet tells that it is this man who has the qualities of a true ruler, and it was he who pulled the sword out of the stone. The cursed armor begins to attack again, and the army decides to split up. Carl will lead the squad in one direction, the rest will protect King Bao. Lancelot will follow the princess. He is raging. How did a man who is alien to the concept of honor turn out to be a true king? The princess begins to worry, of course, the captain said that the teacher's condition is extremely unstable, and he is very different from his former self. Lancelot cannot trust a man who cannot make sacrifices for the sake of important things, because the knight himself is just like that. Violet protects him, Zhang Bao made them find hope again. But Lancelot continues to doubt whether he is really able to control the sword. What the knight has seen before doesn't look promising. The princess almost convinces the teacher that, yes, the captain is worthy of Excalibur. When Lancelot sees the goat balls, which Zhang Bao calls pills that will save their eleven kings, Lancelot wonders how much you need to lose self-esteem to eat this stuff. 
The first knight kills all the cursed armor that tried to kill them before, but suddenly the corpses begin to merge together. Demonic flowers begin to come out of the ground in huge quantities, and the princess brings tulips to the captain. She puts flowers on Jang Bao as if he is already dead, and it all looks kind of strange. But it starts to work. Yellow smoke is gathering over the captain's body. Lancelot leans over the lying man. The problems are only being added. In addition to Zhang Bao, a huge sprout towers over them with a huge threat. They entangle the tower, and the princess sees in this plant the King of Roses. She recalls how in one of the arguments with her father, this man threatened that the city would be absorbed sooner or later. After the demons took over his mind, he turned into this horror. Lancelot remembers the Rose King as a greedy cannibal maniac. The princess and her teacher are rushing into battle. Until the captain wakes up, she must try to buy time. This place is her home, and even if it was destroyed, Violet can't let the monster continue to torment the city. Lancelot praises his ward, she has become an amazing warrior. The events are transferred to seven years ago, when the carrion was still blooming and smelled. The girls on the streets were discussing the main character of the nightly competitions, who is not only good-looking, but also has excellent manners. At the training ground, the first knight, Lancelot, announces the knighthood selection. He asks why the princess is here, and behind her is 12-year-old Carl. Violet herself is 9. On her shoulder sits a small white cat with a haughty look. The girl asks in a commanding tone to train her so that she can become a great knight. However, the knight's path is not for a princess. Violet insists, because she is her father's only child, she will inherit the throne in the future, but few people like a woman to rule the country. She wants to prove that she can do anything, so she needs to become a knight. The maid tries to take the princess back to the castle, but Lancelot allows her to stay, since she is here with the consent of the king, then fine. The teacher announces the gathering at the training ground at 5 in the morning. At the age of 12, she did not lose her ardor, and Carl still followed her tail. After that, she herself began to scold her teacher for being late at 3 in the morning. They were engaged in a field of black tulips. The princess must understand what it means to be a knight. Self-sacrifice, heroism, modesty, simplicity, kindness, honesty, loyalty. If Violet wants to become a knight, she must remember the spirit of chivalry. At one of the trainings, the princess was badly injured, and at night she could not sleep because of the pain in her arm. The cat, Silver, was worried about her, but she calmed the pet by talking about how a knight should not cry because of such a trifle. In the future, she will face even greater difficulties, so she will cope with this. The cat brings her a black tulip as a sign of support and a reminder of chivalry. The next morning Violet was gone. Yesterday she went to prepare for the hunt, but fell behind the others. Today, the princess has not returned. The girl must be in danger. Violet, meanwhile, was with Silver in the forest and was running from a strange monster. 